Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, once more draw near to us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the gospel lesson was the opening of the gospel of Mark. And Mark begins in his exuberant way by telling the story of John the Baptist as the one who prepared the way for Jesus. And at the end of that passage that Tony read, there's the baptism of Christ in which the voice from heaven says, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. So to learn more about this beloved son, this incarnation of God in Christ, We turn now to a reading from the Apostle Paul to the church in Philippi. This is a reading from Philippians chapter 2, and I'm going to be reading verses 2 through 11. Listen to God's word. Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility Regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped. But instead, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, And being found in human form, Christ humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that's above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To not talk today about the COVID pandemic we're all living through feels phony, like giving you a Hallmark greeting card while the birthday candles have set the curtains on fire behind us. But to talk about the pandemic to say once more what this season actually feels like, to name the lives that it's taking, the the jobs and the careers and the personal finances that it's destroying, well, I'm not sure we really have the emotional energy to think about the virus anymore, burning curtains or not. So the line we will walk in this sermon is to acknowledge the reality of the pandemic around us without allowing it to be the only reality, because it's not. And for that, thanks be to God. Last Sunday, Pastor BJ kicked off the Advent season by reminding us of the beauty found in the opening verses of John chapter 1, where it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. As he said, literally made our home with us. So our theme for these four weeks of Advent is going to be the incarnation. God becoming flesh in Jesus Christ. Coming to literally dwell and make a home with us. Now, not only was that an important profession of faith back in the first century CE, it's a critically important one today, right now, even with all the COVID crisis. And so given that fact, the question is, well, how should we live our lives right now? Well, advice on this topic comes to us from the Apostle Paul, as I read from his letter to the church in Philippi from chapter 2. And he says this, Make my joy complete. Do nothing from selfishness or from selfish motives, but regard others as better than yourselves. Look to the interests of others and have the same mind as in Christ Jesus. Now Paul's words feel like a tall order. I mean, we've already given up so much lately lately. 
We scarcely go out. We wear masks any time we're together. We keep our distance. And we've been doing this for a month, and the COVID reality does not look like it's going away anytime soon, even as we await a new year. And yet Paul tells us to humble ourselves even more. Paul says, care for the needs of others even more. And through that, our joy will be complete. Now his words are true. And so we need to relax and breathe and trust those words for a moment. Because Paul actually knows what he's talking about. Paul says, humble yourselves, have the same mind in Christ Jesus. Back in 1974, the nominees for the National Book Award for Poetry were four people, Audre Lorde, Alice Walker, Adrian Rich, and Allen Ginsberg. Now the three women, when they learned they were nominated, got in touch with each other. And they decided that if any one of them might win, they would accept the award on behalf of all three. And they would read a speech that they had written together. And so when Adrienne Rich's name was called as the winner for that year, she came to the podium and she said this, We, Audrey Lord, Adrienne Rich, and Alice Walker, believe we can enrich ourselves more by supporting and giving to each other rather than by competing against each other. And so we will share this prize together. And we dedicate this occasion to the struggle for self-determination of all women, for the mother and the dishwasher, the mathematician and the pregnant teenager, the teacher, the waitress, the philosopher, the silent women whose voices have long been denied, and the articulate women who have given us strength to do our work. There's something powerful and inspiring in this decision by such talented women that they would share any prize that might be awarded to them. I mean, they each had a very strong sense of self and pride in their own creative writing, but their self-love was wide enough to include love for others. We all know people who are, let's say, a tad narcissistic. Those folks who need to be the center of every conversation, who need a steady diet of compliments and affirmations. Narcissists have a self-love that is obsessed with keeping precisely what it has and adding to it more of the same. And that's why narcissism is ultimately so boring because there's never any change, there's never any growth. It simply clings, it holds on, it whines, and it pushes others away even as it craves their constant attention. The psychotherapist and Zen master Carl Fried Durkheim used to say, you can never kill the ego, you can only find that it lives in a larger house than you thought. A healthy self finds a larger house to dwell in than just a house where everyone coddles us and responds to our every whim. A healthy self steps out into the world. It meets people. It works with people. It cares for others. It commits to their well-being. And that's actually not just a psychological truth. It's a spiritual truth. The human self cannot be healthy unless it grows. And for us as creatures made in the image of God, to grow means to love. Out of love, the divine word became flesh. Out of love, Christ came to dwell with us, to make a home with us. He did not count equality with God as something to be clung to, but instead emptied himself and being born in human likeness, so that out of love, ourselves may grow, and we might live in a larger house, in a larger kingdom of grace than we ever imagined possible. Now, the Apostle Paul 
wonderfully links this idea of a humble, expansive love with the Christian virtue of joy, of making joy complete. In almost every Presbyterian church service, there comes a time for announcements. Now, when that happens, often the minister will set it up by saying to you, let's now have a moment to share, what's the words? To share joys and concerns. And in that part of the service, you'll hear about church bake sales and about food drives. You'll hear about committee meetings at 7 o'clock and Bible studies on Tuesday. But often in that prayer time, you'll hear news that is people sharing about both their prayers and their answered prayers. You'll hear about people who are having surgery in the coming days or others who just found out their cancer is in remission. You might hear about people who've lost a job or lost a loved one. Or you might hear about someone who has a new job opportunity or a new birth in their family. This type of sharing is critical to our life on Sundays. It's one of the things we've missed the most. Because compiled with the vertical aspect of worship, the lofty sermons, the readings of scriptures, the sermons that hopefully give you some strength and guidance for the days ahead. In addition to the vertical, we need the horizontal. We need those prayer requests. We need to hear what's happening in each other's lives. We need those mundane announcements. Because in those words, there's expressions of something more than just happiness or service or peace. There's an outgoing expression of joy. And in that, our joy is made complete. Let me pull together and review what I've basically said so far. In this difficult pandemic season, I told you a story of three poets, three women who chose to share a prize rather than possess it alone. They modeled an expansive self-love, an ego willing to live in a larger house than might have been thought possible. And on the spiritual level, this was important because the self can only grow when it grows in love. And so what results from this type of growth? What happens when we do nothing from selfish ambition, but in humility look after the needs of others? What happens when we seek to have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus? Well, as I said, what happens is we discover joy, not just happiness, not just pleasure. We discover joy in becoming fully children of God. And in that identity, our joy is complete. A couple of days ago, I was out doing an errand on my way home from church. It was an overcast, gray Pittsburgh afternoon, although we all know what those are like. As I was going out, I was wearing my mask. I was going to quickly and safely visit a store in Squirrel Hill where they would hand to me a purchase I'd made online. I wasn't going to poke around in the store to see what else was on the shelves. I wasn't going to have a conversation about the weather or the stillers or what was going on in the city with whoever was behind the counter. It was one of those perfunctory typical errands in this unusual and frustrating season. But as I walked back to my car on that day, I saw a slogan stenciled onto the sidewalk, and I'll have Tim show the slide now. It said, the worst doesn't happen often. Now the slide's not a typical superficial Hallmark card greeting, We all know that sometimes the worst does happen, that bad things do happen. And there are moments when we are disappointed and frustrated and anxious. But the stenciled message wasn't cynical, just the opposite. It reminded us and me on that day that the worst isn't the norm. It's the exception to the norm. No, what happens often is usually the good. And sometimes it's the very good. 
and the wonderful. In those moments, we recognize how to keep things in perspective. See, the silent sidewalk poet reminded me that I can fixate on the worst in the world or I can look beyond myself and I can grow and look for what is actually more common that I can choose to dwell in a larger house. I can open myself up to joys and concerns. I can breathe and trust that moving about in this world is the incarnate Christ, the one who emptied himself, took the form of a servant, born in a human likeness, one who was humbled on the cross yet exalted by the resurrection from the grave to proclaim that the worst does not happen often. And in fact, The worst is not what's ultimately real. And in remembering that, we're given again the gift of life. Remembering that is a healing blessing in a time of disease and anxiety. Remembering that is how joy becomes complete. I began our service today by standing in front of three key symbols of our faith the lit candles of the Advent wreath, pointing us towards the incarnation of Christ as a child in Bethlehem. The table of communion, where Christ stands as the host and the offering given out of love for us. And an empty cross that reminds us that the one who died is alive, who's been raised to new life, And so I invite you to breathe in the fullness of that good news. I invite you to look beyond this moment and look to the needs of those around you. And in so doing, grow in who you are. May we trust in the promise, the hope, and yes, the complete joy given to us in Christ Jesus. Amen.